the man that stole $24 million from McDonald's. This is a tale of thievery and greed that will tell the story of Jerome Paul Jacobson, who conned McDonald's out of $24 million over the course of 12 years. Watch the video till the end as we tell you about one of the world's biggest frauds ever. The Infamous Prize Game If you're old enough, you might remember that McDonald's used to have a thing called the Monopoly Prize Game, in which the famous fast food restaurant partnered with Hasbro to give away houses, cars, luxury cruises, and the grand prize of $1 million to one out of every 150 million people who ate at McDonald's. These game vouchers and win cards were attached to drink cups, french fry packets, burger boxes, and even advertising brochures in magazines. All you had to do was find the right win cards and you could walk away with anything, from a free soda to an entire house. This brilliant marketing tactic spread like wildfire throughout the United States and Canada. People went insane buying McDonald's in hopes of becoming billionaires overnight. Everything was going great until everything went wrong. Armed robbers started raiding restaurants, forcing employees and customers to surrender up their game pieces. However, it was kind of strange that no one ever won the big prize. Sure, there were a few unexpected winners, but no one was able to win a million dollars. No one knew why this was happening, as McDonald's assured that there will be more than one winner every year. Things were eerily calm, but then prizes started disappearing, and no one knew who won them. The Unidentified Winner McDonald's was giving out $2 million a year, but no one knew the identity of the winner. Many people said that everything was rigged. However, McDonald's claimed that this is not the case. They released a statement explaining the choosing process, which helped people understand that the winners were chosen by an independent security firm, who was also in charge of shipping the winning pieces to different places around the United States. On the contrary, during these 12 years, $24 million vanished into thin air, and no one knew where the money went. And it all revolved on a man named Jerome Paul Jacobson, who managed to defraud McDonald's of $24 million over the course of 12 years. Jerome Paul Jacobson had a lengthy history of poor luck as a teenager. He tried out for the Marines, but was turned down owing to his high arches. Then in 1976, he joined the police force's floor, but a year later he damaged his arm and was placed on medical leave. While hearing from his injuries, Jerome developed paralysis in his arms, legs, eyes, and respiratory system. Even his wife had to abandon her job to care for him after he was diagnosed with a severe neurological condition. Soon after he was ruled unfit to return to work, Jerome's wife then secured him a job as a security auditor in 1981 at the same place she was also employed. It appeared that he had finally gotten a break, but the couple fought so much at work that they separated two years later. Following his divorce, things at the job began to change. Luck in Handwork Jerome earned a reputation for being diligent, having an unblemished work ethic, and being tough on anyone who disobeyed the rules. He was the ideal security auditor and rose through the ranks to become in control of one of the company's most important clients, Simon Marketing, which happened to be in charge of $500 million in marketing for none other than McDonald's. Simon Marketing was also in charge of manufacturing and distributing the game pieces when the McDonald's game began in 1987. Jerome made certain that the job was completed without a hitch. He even looked at the workers' shoes to make sure they weren't trying to steal anything. The restrictions were so tough that the workers weren't even allowed to go to the bathroom alone. Jerome ordered to watch everyone in the place 24 hours a day. As a result of his amazing work ethic, Simon Marketing persuaded Jerome to leave his existing position and work for them. Change in Fortune A year later, Jerome was now in charge of looking after the most valuable game pieces in the history of mankind. He'd take ownership of them, put them in envelopes with tamper-proof tape, fly first class to McDonald's factories, and place them on food packing sent to McDonald's outlets. He even came up with the concept of putting watermarks on the tickets to prevent them from being forged. These actions resulted in company putting too much faith in him. That is, until he discovered the system was rigged. By the late 1980s, Jerome Jacobson was earning $70,000 a year flying first class and bossing people. This was everything he had ever desired, but he still wanted more. Jerome saw that Simon Marketing was cheating the game by changing the destination for instant win tickets and rerouting them from Canada to US. This was a critical turning point for Jerome, who had struggled to earn money all his life himself. It was hard for him to bear the rig system right in front of him, so he gathered rigging knowledge and stored it in his back pocket. The game is rigged. After a few weeks, he got a pair of anti-tamper stickers and brought them to his house. These were the only things he needed to rig the game in his favor, and he wasted no time. 
He used to travel with an impartial auditor who was usually a woman to drop off the game pieces. The woman accompanied him in order to keep an eye on him. However, the restrooms were the only location she couldn't follow him, so that's where he did the work. He opened the packet, removed the instant win card, replaced it with a less expensive piece, and then replaced the tamper-proof tape. All of this was easy, but there was one more problem to solve. Jerome was unable to win the game, as McDonald's liked to get photos and do an interview with the winner, and if he had done that, he would be exposed. As a result, he resorted to his friends and family for help. Jerome presented his brother with a prize of $25,000 for a winning piece. Then he gave a $10,000 one to his neighborhood butcher in exchange for $2,000 in revenue. He worked up the nerve to steal a $1 million price piece, which he promptly stashed in a safety deposit box. And now that he'd gained some confidence, it was time to take things to the next level. Jerome chose his customers at random in his states, whether it was someone he met on the airline or someone from his barber shop, making it impossible for authorities to trace the dots. People would buy game pieces, fronts, or a share of their profits from him. After they claimed the price, he would arrange for his clients to go out of the country, rent an apartment, a car, and pay bills, all in order to make it appear as if they actually resided in the state they claimed the price from. Growing Connections Luckily for him, Jerome then met a member of the Colombo Mafia family, who went by the name of Jerry Colombo. Jerry was a clever man, and with his help the operation just grew manifold. Instead of merely selling the $1 million prize pieces, they decided to sell all of them. Jerome began grabbing other rates as well. He sold Colombo the winning Dodge Wiper ticket. Thanks to his new criminal family ties, he wasn't selling to his neighbors or family only, but instead he was selling to members of the mob as well. Anyone with enough money to afford these huge rewards was buying them. Whether it was pimps, drug dealers, or any other, everyone avoided any publicity each time they claimed their rewards. They desired seclusion, but after 12 years of refusing to show their faces in the cold, people began to suspect everything related to this scheme. By that time, almost every member of Jerome's family had cashed in on some form of game piece, and Jerome was finally able to live the life of a true racketeer. He was squandering his hard-earned money on any and all luxury items he could lay his hands on. He purchased property around the United States, began an antique automobile collection, and paid for his friends and family to go on luxury cruises. Jerome's next-door neighbor watched in awe as the number of automobiles he purchased continued to rise every day. They would often joke about where the winning tickets were going, but no one suspected that he was doing anything improper, because he didn't seem like the kind. The Downfall Jerome continued to make money until something utterly unexpected occurred that would alter the path of Jerome's life for the rest of his life. It all happened in 1998, when Jerry Colombo and his wife were arguing almost every day, and were on the verge of divorce. One day they were traveling together in the car with Jerry's wife driving, when they had a massive car accident. Jerry Colombo died in the hospital, and suddenly all eyes were on Jerry's wife. Many were contemplating whether she killed him due to their disagreements, or was it Jerome, who was becoming weary of sharing his money, and needed to find new clients without Jerry Colombo. These acquisitions were the start of Jerome's downfall. To be safe and keep his business rolling, Jerome enlisted the aid of three men. They would recruit clients, persuade them to pay, and then their clients would discover winning game pieces in magazines, the back of their cars, or even an amount of trash at home, with no one suspecting any wrongdoing. And it was a flawless operation, save for the fact that the Colombo family, suspicious, enraged, and seeking vengeance, had discovered a cause to make of their next targets. Soon enough, the entire family decided to hit Jerome where it would pain him the most. They anonymously made a contact to FBI Special Agent Dent in March 2000 and informed him that a man named Uncle Jerry was fixing the McDonald's Monopoly game. The agent immediately called a McDonald's representative to inform them of the situation and to begin the investigation. FBI Involved Suddenly a slew of questions popped into McDonald's representatives as to why didn't any of the winners want to go public with their victory. What happened to them? Worried that this Uncle Jerry was rigging the game, McDonald's suspended the competition in 2001. McDonald's also announced the discontinuation of their relationship with Simon Marketing. After a little investigation, the FBI identified Uncle Jerry, aka Jerome, but the FBI required confirmation. As a result, they initiated Operation Final Answer, a months-long monitoring operation on Jerome and his accomplices. The group had become so accustomed to their techniques that they never expected the FBI to be observing them after 12 years. The FBI put a wiretap on Jerome's phone, which led him to a massive ring of psychic strip club owners and inmates. FBI monitoring followed Jerome all the way to South Carolina, where he met with a man named John Davis. The FBI was unable to record the winning pieces transfer, 
However, eight days later, a McDonald's representative called Agent Dent to inform him that someone had claimed to have located the winning piece. Admission of Guilt The FBI had everything they needed when they arrested and tried the winner, John Davis. After John's confession, Jerome Jacobson was interrogated for six hours, and he admitted to all of the charges leveled against him. He admitted to stealing the majority of the huge winning pieces over the course of the last 12 years. In exchange for his confession, Jerome was sentenced for only 15 years in prison. All of his luxury cars and property was seized, along with Simon Marketing. This was one of the most massive and intricate cases of fraud in human history. That's it from today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video. If you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.